Thank you. All right. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Did you get the coke? <laughs> Welcome to the DS. Oh, hi. Mm, yes. <laughs> We're going to be talking about Theopolis today. I didn't see you yeah. standing That's there behind the camera. <laughs> exactly. So today we have Cokes for Cog Dog. Yeah. We have Hooray! cookies. Well, two of us do. We, I didn't know what this whole cookie love thing was, cookies palace. So I actually thought of Cokes for Cog Dog. I didn't think of it. I just said it. Actually, who, so who thought in of honor of cookies for Cog Dog, we also have cookies. Can I have one, please? We're going to share them during the broadcast. I know. They've, I've been torturing them all day. By the way, Martha, your cookies look really good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Whatever. Can I have two? And Lee's like, yeah, you can have two. Lee's okay. like, yeah. Okay, Lee. Mom, yeah. Thank they you. A, they have a fragrant bouquet. This is so the Toll House recipe you. So. with a substitution. We use Crisco instead of butter. Mm. And, and no Lovely. nuts. Cause, um, so tell people what Cookie Love's about because not everybody... Well, follows everything so mm. it's just um you know <laughs> alan's mom passed away mm -hmm. last week Good and My bad. Excuse us. Yeah, that's right. We gotta. You Can we do start it? over? Oh yeah, that's right. Go ahead. We got an amateur on, uh, on the what controls. <laughs> Fix the audio. <laughs> Where's the problem? Amateurs. We'll just eat some cookies while we wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just add audio to that delicious. shot. Just a shot too. Uh huh. I already took. Cause they're like Entenmann's cookies. Entenmann's. Entenmann's. All right. We're good. Wow. Are we good now? Very yep. good. We're good Martha. now. Sorry about that. So. All right. Go back to the like I was TV saying, party. what is cookie love? Okay, cookie. Um, Alan's mom passed away last week, and you know that he shared that, and um, last week, and shared what he was going through in a variety of different ways. And one of the things that you know he had shared with us before in the past and talked about again was the fact that she um, used to bake cookies every Sunday, and then would give them out over the course of the week. I guess mostly to strangers or anybody who she thought needed cookies, and. Mm -hmm. um, what actually made me think that maybe we could do this is uh, Darcy and his family had baked cookies last week in honor of her memory. And I don't know, on thurs Thursday morning or Friday morning, I was just thinking, wouldn't it be cool if um, we all uh, got together and baked cookies this Sunday in, in memory of Alice and gave them away. And um, I, I actually contacted Julia Forsyth on Twitter and she helped me put together a little Google Doc, which is at bit.ly dot slash cookie love mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, we just invited people to you know make cookies um, and this week give them away and you know tag it cookie love on Twitter or Flickr right. or wherever with pictures and um, and it's been I think it's it's been nice well yeah look it's at this awesome. Twitter stream because yeah. this is incredible yeah. I mean this is just in the past yeah. hour hour and a half but this whole mm -hmm. weekend people have just been going and talking about what cookie love means to them, what they've been, you know, doing with the cookies and telling stories about that. They've been blogging about their experiences of doing it. So it's a really awesome little movement in and of itself and a good uh, well, sort and of... Well, like not to get too hippy-dippy on Jim Groom, but I'm a firm yeah, believer in like you get back what you put into the world, like whatever that means, you know, it's like pay it forward and yeah. put out there what you want to get back. And to me, which what Alan's mom did was such a great example of that. You know, yeah. just not a, you know, just such a simple thing, but so meaningful in so many ways. And so it's just great to see so many people just baking cookies and sharing them. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. everybody loves cookies. Definitely. And on that note. Cookie means, <laughs> cookies mean love. And we and Andy were actually lobbying for the idea that cookie love go on. Not only we benefit mm -hmm. directly from getting cookies, but... You know, if you couldn't cook them on Sunday, no reason why not to do it during the week. Right. Because I know me yeah. and my family have a plan to do the cookies during the week. We couldn't get to it Sunday. Absolutely. Right. And, and we're still looking for our classic, my mom's classic co cookie recipe. So um, if, if not, I might just do the basic Toll House on the back of the wrapper or whatever. But. Well, these are the basic Toll House, which I guess is what Alan's mom used to make. This is my husband makes chocolate chip cookies from this recipe all the time for our family. And um, we make a double batch and then freeze them. Um, the only d difference is we use Crisco instead of butter. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Uh, they came out good. They're good. They're good cookies. Yeah, that was really good. 
And so. I'm actually also, the other thing that I remember from the, the, the podcast, I remember Alan was on the, the radio a couple of nights this week, you know, while I was in Baltimore. And then he was talking about, I think his mom used nuts. Like yes, that was her she put peanuts. Yeah. peanuts. Okay. Yeah. But I just love, I mean, what I love about this is, you know, not only what a great way for Alan, hopefully, to help him grieve and for us to help him as friends, but just a, the idea of this collective around something like cookies rather than, like, some tech. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. Like, I just love this community. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. It is really neat. Jim, you've been busy with uh, UMW blogs and getting that set up for a lot of classrooms, right? Yeah, I've been, I love it. It was the beginning of the semester, I used to joke. When I, I mean, Martha and Andy have been here with me for a long time, and I'm an ogre. Like, I freaked out a couple of times early on <laughs> at the beginning of the semester because I take, I try and do so much and get in the classrooms, and they were just like, you're such a jackass. Like, I've been, like, literally <laughs> at a table, and I've just been like, Us? you don't understand, oh. you know? And they were just like, whatever, go. But I found a way to kind of balance myself a little bit more. But I just love going into the classrooms, even though if they don't need me there. I'm like, take me, have me come in. And yeah. I just love talking about it and kind of just pimping you on the blogs and talking about what's possible and own their media. And I just, for me, it's a ritual and it like gets me excited for the semester and feels like return to school, bring your A game. <clears throat> You know, it's what I get excited about. Well, yeah. we've gone into classes before and talked about different technologies, but UMW Blogs consistently is the one where they kind of go, oh, this is a little bit different, and really, I actually own this space, yeah. and I can do my own thing with it, and I can create more than one space, and it's not, there aren't many dictations from the college on how I should do this. That's right. Um, it's, it, they just, they, their eyes kind of open wide when you, when you tell them that this, pos this is possible. It is whatever you imagine it to be. Exactly. Well, yeah, I mean, it's this very flexible space. It's like, oh, I can find plugins and themes, and I can mm -hmm. trick it out. It reminds me, in a way, of you know why MySpace took off and such right. popularity was people could make that space their own, and it could right. be what they wanted to be, whether that yeah. be a good, a really nice design or a really freaking ugly design. It didn't matter because it was their space, and they could do what they want with it. And I think, I think, in some ways, you see a lot of students treat it like that. You know, it's their own mm -hmm. little section where they can be publishing stuff and they can play around with different plugins. Um, and we really tell them to not be afraid to break things. Anytime we've ran courses like DS106, it's like get in there, fool around. If you're break, if you're not breaking something, you're not doing it right. Yep. So, yeah, it, we did a we did a couple <laughs> sessions today with creative Sorry. writing classes and. No, we did. That was did, great. Did yeah. I always tell them? You know, there's really nothing you can do that isn't irreversible. That isn't. <laughs> I don't know. I know you're reading, reading about the professors. Right, professors. Yeah. blogs at the pleasure. He's on a roll. Well, yeah. one of the things too is that, like, you know, Martha and I, who did the one with uh, um, Warren Rochelle and uh, Brady Earnhardt. Brady Earnhardt. There are 1,700 posts archived from that, which from I tried last to delete. Three semesters. <laughs> yeah, which you did. <laughs> you did your best. Another story. I did everything I could to delete them, but Martha <laughs> saved them. But like, we also have this kind of really rich archive. And the other thing we've remarked about in the office is. You know, UMD Blogs has been running so rock solid. I mean, knock on wood, yes, of course. We said this before, right? I mean, it is. It really is. It's yeah. been so, it's so nice to yeah. see that thing and mature. Very responsive. And very responsive. I want to pull this awesome. up because Martha had a, um, a redesign, That's if right. you will. So we've got a new look to it. We do. But Tim is what made, who, the one who went in and made it look good. So. Oh. Well, can we go down a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Look, what's up with the course, with the featured sites? Why didn't we change the colors on those? Um, I don't know. What's wrong with them? You don't like them? No. The blue strip blue, no. And I want to change the, the header title spaces. I want to do this on TV so there's a record okay, of it. Okay, yeah. But, like, I want to change the <laughs> colors of, like, you know, the search box and stuff, not the blue. Why? You don't like the orange? No, I like the orange. What I don't like is, like, they're all blue. Like, there's blue, blue, you know, yeah, flicker, right. gray. It's well, we'll take that under consideration. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that. In that's yeah, advice. well, while you're applauding Tim, maybe he should actually finish what he started. Well, one other thing <laughs> important to note is that we've got this latest post, which is a plugin yeah. that you wrote. I know. No, no. no Boone wrote it. That. Boone yeah. wrote it. Boone okay. wrote it, and I just tweaked it with Curtis's help as well. Mm -hmm. I, really, they did the heart heavy lifting, and I, like, <laughs> made it kind of happen here. You mean Curtis yeah. Pancho Villa Express Gramala? Is Don't that, we not talk about him on the show anymore because he doesn't like Chipotle? <laughs> oh, exactly. yeah. a moratorium. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. yeah. He never. So, but that was Morgan. great. Do Boone really <laughs> is the one who did the most work with that, and yeah. I I promised him I would blog about it because it's actually kind of a cool little plugin that he wrote. Yeah. A couple. Of, there's so. still a couple of bugs in it though. There are, and I got to work those out. Yeah, I'm glad post. that like here we are celebrating the work we've done, and Jim's going to use the time to critique. Just killing me. You know, My work. But listen, you know what? 
I love don't you too. Treat, I don't want to treat this as a brochure. No That's more cookies. Still, this is the web guy. No more cookies. Shovel. I want yeah, one more. <laughs> if we start doing this as brochure, this is ongoing. This is like us blogging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Tomorrow we're going into another class. Right. Into oh. Jeff's right. the info, info age. age. No. Yeah. Tim, Andy, and I are going. I don't know if you're going. Well, I um, might have a. I might have. It's to okay. Go. We don't. We figured all out. You don't need to be there. Yeah, we find we didn't need you. <laughs> so you guys go to one class at the beginning of the semester, and all of a sudden that's the <laughs> class. <laughs> Unbelievable. Typical. It's, it's an interesting <laughs> class. It's where things are happening. And we were so, working today on. Yeah, why don't you show what we were working yeah, on today? Yeah, let me pull this up. So it's a. They're talking about the information age, and their role is going to be to uh, be creating this timeline. So uh, if you've ever used Simile before, that's what we're using here. And it's um, the plugin for WordPress. For right. Simile, yeah. Yeah. So they can actually create posts in WordPress and they'll get stuck here on the timeline. I don't have any example ones in there yet. It would but, be more visually interesting if right. you did. Yeah. If it wasn't just an, <laughs> an empty just an time. Empty time. <laughs> for now, it's just a calendar. I mean, Simile is <laughs> ugly to begin with. But anyway, so. Well, it is pretty cool how you can like author posts and then Charlie Rocket. Charlie have Rocket. them show up. Rocket. It's Charlie. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, and so we're going in. We're going to talk to them about that, about some visual and design stuff. Yeah, some DS one hundred and six. For some type assignments tools. they're going to yeah. be doing and video. video. And video. Yeah. yeah. So. So we're going to do that in two eleven in the new. That's right. Awesome That's cool classroom in Monroe. Yeah, right. absolutely a cool room. What else has been going on this last week? Anyone? Can we bring in the? If you, can you go to that that class that picture that Jeff had up? I don't know if you can get to that quickly oh, or not. Oh yeah. Let it's me kind pull of it's kind of a up. cool room where yeah. where. Students are, are able to collaborate around a monitor on the wall. And there's then like four monitors or three? I think there's three monitors in and the back projector. and then there's the main projector. Yeah. And so each, each group of students can kind of work on their stuff and then when they have something interesting to show, they can send it up on the big board. But um, here's kind of a panoramic or a stitched together photo of what that room looks like. So this is Monroe Hall, one of the oldest buildings on campus. That just um, got, yeah. That just was finished this, this fall getting renovated. Very cool. That's pretty cool. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. We should we we're dying to teach DS one hundred six in there. In yeah. The yep. Right. We got to figure Definitely. out what's going on with that. Yeah. Well. It, DS one hundred six. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk, we'll about, talk that. about that. Um, what else? What have you been doing, Jim? What I've been doing. You know, I've been blogging. Oh. He has I been like blogging. the blog. I'm a big fan of the blogger. <laughs> um, you know what happened? This doesn't necessarily relate, but I want to give it a plug here. Martha had helped me develop out Shenandoah Journal, and they went live. You and up? so we, that was kind of born from the Literary Journals class um, literary that board. Claudia Emerson actually started here about four years ago. And so it led to us developing out a kind of major national literary journal. Um, and there it is. You can see Shenandoah Journal. And they went their first issue. Well, what happened with the Shenandoah is they went totally online. Um, they no longer were being given the funds, I think, to do the print. So this is a completely online free journal, and it's developed in WordPress. And I think one time, hopefully, Martha and I can sit down and do a DTLT today. Because the design for this is really interesting. They can create as many new issues as they want right out of the box in this WordPress. And they can have users actually submit their stuff. It's actually, actually a really cool um, framework for a literary journal. So I was happy about well, that. I was happy it went live. The whole idea of using multi-site where each journal is a new blog on multi-site. Yeah. Um, using a shared child theme and um, very cool. And it allows you to share some stuff back and forth among them. It's it's cool. It was yeah. fun. It was a fun project. It was a fun project. So thank you, Martha. Sure thing, Jim. Want another cookie? I do. <laughs> yes. Cookie love. And so. then I've been working on something that I'm for now Ooh. anyway calling Media U. Yeah. So that's right. Oh, yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's this, is, it out. this is yeah. more cool stuff. So, well, I mean, basically, we've talked about before about how much iTunes use sucks because it's just sort of like you have to go into iTunes, uh, you know, into their mm. little iTunes store just to download these lectures and stuff, which really is only beneficial to someone who's always in iTunes or has an iPad or an iPhone or something like that. And so UMW never really used it. We, we have an account. But apparently Apple says that we have to have like 100 courses or something for us 100, to... 100 individual media files. Media files. For us no. to even show up in their directory. Which we're getting very close to with DTLT today. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. No. Not using them. Not at all. So, and there's nothing social about it. You know, it's like, you mm. know, you can't have any interactivity. It's just sort of, these are the media files, you know, and you subscribe to them. 
but really with what WordPress has become. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim, you wrote a post back in 2007 about how uninteresting iTunes U is with the advent of WordPress and PodPress and the ability for you really to put this stuff up on the web. Mm -hmm. And I mean, what we're doing now with DTLT today, you know, we can feed it into iTunes, sure, if people want to subscribe there, they can, mm -hmm. but it's really out there on the web and that's where the majority of people, I think, are gonna consume the content and find it. Well, and we also talked about how difficult it is to even find a link to a media file right. when it's when right. it's buried in, into iTunes U. And, and as far as you know, the user interface for people trying to ingest media into that system, it's very, you know, as opposed to user friendly, it's user hostile. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have said that, right? Like, <laughs> Apple's done a lot of good things for design. iTunes U is not one of them. Right. Yeah. right. So the basic idea then was could we create this sort of WordPress framework, this project, um, using plugins, using specific themes, and you know, fit it so that basically what you have is this packaged idea of iTunes U for the web. An institution could take this version of WordPress, WordPress multi-site, and put it out there on a server, and then that would function as iTunes U, but it would be forward-facing. Professors can, of course, always make a site or a post private, you know, and it would only be for internal use or password protected, but for the most part, everything you put out there would be open. So I started working on this. We talked about wanting to use WordPress multi-site, uh, which would basically mean that any faculty or staff member could, or maybe even a student could go in there and create a series, a video series where they could then start uploading their content. And we don't quite have it all working in terms of uploading of the video or where the video gets hosted. We're not quite there yet. But you know, I'll show you, this is, um, this is what a standard video site looks like. And you can see I'm really taking from iTunes U some of these ideas of having this idea of album art and the title. And one really cool thing about this theme that I'm using is uh, I developed the theme, but the framework that it's using is called Skeleton, which means that let's say they're looking at, at it on an iPhone, which of course is not gonna be this huge browser. It's gonna be something about that width. Everything gets sized down and gets dropped but you don't lose any of the content. So this actually resizes itself on the fly. It grabs things and throws them around so that you know no matter what the, the width or size of the device is, it actually still works. Um, another really cool thing about this, I can log in real quick and show you, is it's using the custom header image function in WordPress. If we lose power, by yeah, the way, like during this demo, we have rain outside. apparently Tropical Storm Lee has arrived. Yeah. In, and not Lee, our student Look, aid. it's another natural disaster. <laughs> but I think we're just dealing with rain today, so yeah. we should be good. So, so here's what's really cool about this part is, you know, I've called it album artwork, and it's got this default image here. Uh, but they can actually go in and browse on the computer, and I can grab, like, let's say I want a picture of myself in here, and I think I've got one in here. Or is this the one, like, tell me again about my eyes picture? Like, tell me again about my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one where he's like, you know, that dog member from, like, right. like from those, like, Looney Tunes. Not Looney Tunes, even before then. Like, Bugs Bunny. Tell so me they again can, about my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so, they, <laughs> so they can upload a picture, and it automatically knows that it has to be square, so it locks in those proportions. <laughs> but then they can crop and publish it. <laughs> well... Another thing, too, about this that I, I really like is not only use media site and get people in, but um, like Curtis was talking about on Friday's episode, you know, we have multi-site and we have many um, sites, multi-network, networks working within UMD blogs. We host Longwood blogs and some other spaces like Faculty Academy. So there's no reason we couldn't just pop in um, basically uh, this media space and make it integrated with all our users and just a little thing on the menu that anyone could use and go there and just kind of, hey, I want to add media to that blog and just make it, here's my sites, here's my media sites, or here's mm -hmm. my media spaces. And it's just seamless. And it's just another, we don't have to do anything. Yeah. Just a design and kind of figure out the video compression and embedding solution, yeah. which we're working on, I yep. guess. But that's yeah. another, mm -hmm. another, another Very series. Very cool. It's early days, but it's exciting. And it fits, well in, nice. it fits well in our media empire media strategy. Media empire. Yeah, right. we are all about the empire these yeah, days. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, well, I think we've got to wrap up. We've covered a lot yeah, of things. Yeah, I think we covered uh, anything else really critical. No? I think we're good. Watch for the rest of the week. Jim's got quite a few different interviews coming up, some people he's planning on talking to. Shelly Rodrigo tomorrow. Shelly Rodrigo tomorrow. Who's Shelly Rodrigo? 
good friend of Cog Dogs. He introduced me yeah. to her, and cool. she's going to be on the show tomorrow. So, thanks for watching, folks. We'll Thanks see you everybody. next time.